So we will not meet as a Sunday school class, but we'll meet with other adult classes. And they're bringing in the teens and I think uh, middle school and I'm not sure what other grades. It might even be upper elementary, but uh, we'll gather and this, this thing will be full. But we're glad to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. And uh, love God's word. We're looking forward to what God has in store for us. I appreciate Thomas Rouse and his faithfulness and always gets a, a song ready for us. And, and then his dear accompanists. I appreciate uh, Miss Joan and uh, we appreciate her faithfulness to prepare as well. So let's grab a hymn book and let's sing one of the great favorites. Amen. We're going to do one of Brother Sloan's favorites this morning. It's number 78. When we all get to heaven, you can remain seated. I think most of you is a little older than I am, maybe not old, all of you, but um, I'll let you rest this morning. Number 78, when we all get to heaven, the first and fourth verse. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus, sing His mercy and His grace. In the mansions bright and blessed, He'll prepare for us a place. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. Onward to the prize before us, soon His beauty will behold. Soon the pearly gates will open, we shall tread the streets of gold. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. Some of you ladies need to be singing two of those notes because I just can't reach them. But anyway, Brother Sloan, it is all yours. Uh, yeah, I've outgrown those high notes. I don't know what's happened. Somebody asked me a while back, why are you not in the choir? And uh, can I tell you, I love the choir. I joined a choir when I was 14 years of age. And um, man, uh, it was a youth choir in my church, Woodbine Free Will Baptist Church. And uh, we had a precious lady. Her name was Sue Hancock. She's from Oklahoma, and um, uh, she volunteered to start a youth choir, and she was a student at Bible College, and just a gracious Christian lady, and she said, now I can only do this a year or so because I know God's going to call me from Nashville to go somewhere and teach or, or do whatever, and lo and behold, um, she never left Nashville, Tennessee. And uh, they have got a reunion coming up. My old youth choir and people that sang with and with her, and I forget how many years that is. Peggy, do you happen to know how many years? Um, but uh, Sue was quite the blessing, and oh, how we loved her. And she developed that choir to the point where we were ready to compete with the... Um, the National Association of Free Will Baptists. Every summer, they have, uh, they have competitions, Bible bow, tic-tac-toe, music, solo, duet, trio, quartet, so forth. I, 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 I was amazed that they never asked me to sing a solo. But, um, uh, but if you get real close to me, you'd understand why they didn't ask me to sing a solo. Uh, I like singing in choirs because they... They back me up well. I mean, they cover me up well. And uh, so, but I was in that U choir for a few years. And we went, uh, we went to, I think it was Wichita, Kansas one year. Um, I'm trying to think of another trip or two. Oklahoma another year went to competition. In those days, 
they had a first, second, and third place. And three out of four years that Peggy was in it, at least two for me, but three out of four years in competing, we won the national, and that was out of about 25 choirs, and that was pretty good. And, uh, but we enjoyed it. Sue was a blessing. When we all get to heaven, I, when Thomas told me last night what we were going to sing, and have you read the story in the background on that song? I'm not going to take up all the precious time we got for Sunday school, but Eliza Hewitt wrote that song, and it eventually was published in 1898. And uh, the lady was born and raised in Philadelphia. She went to college to become a school teacher. And one day when she was out on the playground with the children, there was a fall or something, and she fell and injured her back. And it just about ended her career of teaching. And it took her many years to heal. While on her back, God moved upon her, and she started writing poetry. And then from that, she started writing songs. And that's one of the songs that she wrote. And uh, she and another lady, her last name was Wilson, and they worked together, they fellowshiped together. But it's so interesting where our songs come from. But I thank the Lord for that blessed hymn. What a precious hymn it is. Excuse me for just a moment. I need to uh, write down two names. Um, in the meantime, you folks at home, God bless you. Welcome. We're glad to have you as a part of our Sunday school class this morning. And uh, we, we look forward to studying from uh, the Old and New Testament today. Uh, several prayer requests, let me give them to you, um, if I may, and just several uh, new ones that we want to add to the list that I've learned of uh, recently. But um, hold on one second. Okay, continue to pray for Miss Parks. I see Brother Al here this morning. Appreciate his faithfulness. And let's just continue to pray for him. Did she have a treatment this week, Al? And so continue to pray for Marlene. And that's about every other week now or so, right? Every three weeks. Every three weeks. So please keep her before the Lord. And then also, we're still bringing a meal out on Tuesdays, I understand. Is that correct? And we could use some folks to please sign up. And if you'd see Brenda Wales and, um, and, and Dennis, is Brenda back there? No. She's in the nursery or Tot Town or something. She's uh, in the Three Ring Circus back there. Anybody want to volunteer? Bob Cherry, put your hand down. I know you don't want to go. <laughs> um, please pray for Miss. Miss Marlene and Alice Spence, and um, we had the funeral this week uh, for Brother Glenwood, and uh, my, how we're going to miss that dear brother and appreciate him, his love for the Lord and love for his family. Uh, Sandra Cromer's mother's funeral is today, this afternoon, and the visitation, I think, is at, is Sandra here? Bless your heart, sister. We're sure praying. Now, give us a little detail. The visitation is at 1 to 5? 1 to 4. No, just 4 o'clock. My ears are playing tricks on me. Ms. Cordell, can I borrow two of your hearing aids? 4 p.m. where? Buckleberry. Is that on the map? Where is Buckleberry? Outside of LaGrange. Outside of LaGrange. I have heard of it. I've never, I, don't, I may have been there and didn't realize it. But, uh, okay, 4 o'clock, and then the funeral's at 5. All right. 
So be praying for this dear sister and praise the Lord for her mother and her testimony. And uh, we know she's enjoying heaven as we speak. Larry Mitchell, continue to pray for him. Pray for Eddie Smith. Let me just give you a, just a tidbit about Eddie Smith. He broke his hip five years ago. He has developed an infection in his hip. And um, they took the, uh, the artificial hip out. And they began treating him with strong antibiotics. I'm hoping that they've already pinpointed which infection it, or what type of infection it is because unless you have the exactness of that, you do not know exactly which medication to use. It's a long story. He is taking treatments every day. He's on his way to take a treatment this morning. He'll leave by 11. Mike Marshall, did you take him yesterday? You're taking him when? Tuesday. He has to go seven days a week. Is it for five or six weeks? Okay. So every day back to Rocky Mount. And you pray specifically that they will get this treatment transferred to Goldsboro and him not have to make that trip. Is there any development on that or do you know? Not that, I know exactly. not that you're aware of. Okay. Um, Evelyn Hill fell yesterday and broke her finger. And uh, did you know that, Dennis? Yes, she sent me a picture, and that finger doesn't belong the way it's pointing. I mean, it's, it, it looks painful. So do remember Evelyn in prayer. Pray for Thomas Rouse. Thomas uh, went to uh, a doctor the other day and uh, uh, a dermatologist and they began to examine uh, a spot on his forehead and he has asked us to remember him in prayer. He's going to the doctor on Tuesday and, um, and, and they are going to do further tests and analyze what this is. And uh, they have a pretty good idea. I'm going to wait and let him on the right opportunity to say and share. I think Pastor's going to say a few words. But put Thomas Rouse on your prayer list, if you will, please. We talked yesterday, and, and even he, uh, we talked on Friday as well. I uh, love this dear man. He'd have a servant's heart, and I appreciate him so very much. And we're praying that God will touch and heal him of this need and we know a God that can. Amen. All right. If there's any other prayer requests, real important, surgery, something coming up. Um, uh, I was going to tell you, uh, Wayne Worley had a procedure this week, came through fine, very successful. Any prayer requests more over here? All right. How about in this section? Anyone? Yes, ma'am. Uh, yes, ma'am. And who is this? A no, no, no. Who? My sister. Your sister. Okay. Okay. All right, Margaret's sister. Please pray for her, Tracy. Kathy Davidson. Kathy, okay, Davidson. Please remember this dear lady in this accident that she's had. Anyone here? Yes, ma'am. And who is this again? That's right. Mm -hmm. Roger did get to see her the week before last. She drove quite a ways up here. 
Roger's sister lives where? In Gilbert, South Carolina. Gilbert, South Carolina. Okay, near Columbia. Yes. Unspoken request. Okay. How many of you have an unspoken request? God knows what they are and what the need is. Many of us, of course, in this section. Sheila, it's good to see you today. Been praying for you and you're you're back in the situation. And Freddie's been doing a good job keeping me informed, updated. I know he is. But he's lucky to have you too. Amen. Leo Edwards Jr. had liver transplant. How about that? Yes, sister. Yes, please pray for Marcellus and Janice, and they've got lots of physical needs, okay? And their daughter. Anybody else, okay? Uh, anybody in the balcony, any special requests, anyone at all? Okay, let's go to Lord in prayer. Let's pray together and uh, try to remember these various folks and ask God to move upon them. Dennis Wells, would you please stand and open us in prayer this morning, please? Amen. Amen. Thank you. Hey, Rodney, do me a favor. Would you bring me a bottle of water? I, I appreciate it, brother, if you would. Thank you. Um, happy birthday, Miss Melba Rouse. Good night. Uh, and today is the 14th, coming up tomorrow. So... Hallelujah. Good. Praise the Lord. And we're praying for your sister, Geraldine, not here today, not feeling well. David Lambert's birthday is on Tuesday. Ann Thornton's on the 17th. And, of course, she's in a facility with her husband. And do pray for this precious couple. My, we miss them. And I can tell you, they miss church and Sunday school a great deal. And then Hemet Patel's birthday uh, will be on Wednesday. Appreciate the faithfulness. Uh, Brother Hemet, what a blessing he is uh, to me. All right. And then we've got one anniversary, Lewis and Beyond Sparks. Lewis, how many years, brother? 47. 47 and counting. God bless you. Happy anniversary to you, my friend. Good. You're a good man. Thank you, brother. All right. Yeah. Anybody else want to drink before I get it? I like that H2O, amen. Can you believe they sell bottled water? I, I got a story about that. Uh, where's Peggy? She doesn't want me to share that. Your brother, honey. You remember Mike went to Arkansas years and years and years ago at what? Yeah. Um, Mike, back in the, I, I think it was the late 70s, early 80s, Mike came back from Arkansas. You know how it is a lot of times uh, somebody will go to another state and they usually buy their kids what? A, a T-shirt. My folks went to, you know, Puerto Rico and all I got was a T-shirt. And Mike comes back and he brings this green bottle about that big, it looked like it was a liter and a half, and it was glass, and it had a, you know, screw off top, and it was mountain spring water from Arkansas. 
up from the Ozarks. Anybody been to the Ozarks? You've missed it if you haven't. It's beautiful. Been to the Passion Play out there. Now, that was second to none. That's some good stuff. And uh, love to do it again. But he brought that big bottle and I sat it in the living room in the corner and it became a conversation piece. I don't know how long we had that bottle and I, until I finally decided to open it up and drink it. But I told Mike, I said, what'd you pay for this thing, man? And he told me, I can't recall what it was. But the thing, he said, all over the people buy, people buy that mountain water and they buy it in different size bottles, probably 12, 16 ounce, and then the big, big bottle. And, uh, and I said, you know, that, and we talked about it. Who would ever think about selling bottled water, waters, tap waters everywhere? But that was mountain spring water. How many of you buy a case about once a week now? I, we do. We go through it. And uh, I like that uh, spring water. And at least they claim it is. And it may be in somebody's kitchen. You know, tap water. We don't know. We're gullible. You know, we're Americans. We'll buy anything, okay? So, oh my, I got to get off that rabbit trail, okay? And I got to pick up my lesson. Yeah. I'm sorry I didn't have your lessons out here this morning. Honey, what was one of the last things I told you last night before I went into my study? I said, I got to go down there. I got to put my programs out. I forgot, and I'd been down here once already and didn't do it. And so here we are, and somebody had to run. Who rescued me this morning? Who went and got them? Who? Larry Brown. There's going to be an extra jewel or two in your crown, brother. Let me tell you something now. Turn with me to the book of Matthew, chapter 24. Matthew, chapter 24. Noah is referenced multiple times throughout the Scripture. We know in Genesis chapter 4, chapter 5, chapter 6, uh, we build up to the story of Noah and the what? Ark. The ark. And um, so, uh, by the way, how many of you have been to uh, Noah's ark? Anybody been? Lewis, how recently have you been, buddy? This past week. I'm a little aggravated with you. You didn't invite me to go. I'd love to go again. Uh, it, is, it is well worth your time and cost. It is, it is amazing. And it's been a few years since I've been. And I'm hoping and praying I can go back. In fact, we've talked a little bit about trying to organize a trip for this fall. Anybody interested? Maybe. Okay. All right. All right, good. Well, I think we could probably fill up a Volkswagen anyway. But uh, no, I think we can get, we can get a, a bus together and uh, I'm going to talk to Brother Hemet and see what we can do. The dynamic duo will be back together. Y'all, I'm excited. I'm a little beside myself. Um, I've gotten to about June 30th and I retire from administration again. I'm going to try retirement once more. And see what happens. My new phrase, my new statement is, Miss Howard, I'm going to retire. And if they come back and ask me to do that again, I'm calling Remax. I'm moving. <laughs> no, I wouldn't be that drastic, but I will tell you, uh, it has been a joy that I was available to do it and be here. I love our staff. I love our kids. And I've I've enjoyed lots of it. Some of it's not been as enjoyable I'd like for it to be in. But uh, that's because I'm an old cager and I, I have no business at my age uh, running a school. But uh, everything's worked out real well. And I could not have done it if it wasn't for the blonde. She's been my elementary principal. Mr. Mosier been the high school principal. And I've had a lot of support and help. And I praise the Lord. Look with me in verse 35, chapter 24 of the book of Matthew. Jesus is speaking. The words are in red. And he said, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. But of that day and hour knoweth no man. 
No, not angels of heaven, but my Father, what? Only. My Father, only. Jesus said, I do not know when I'm coming back, but I will return. And I will rapture you and take you to glory. But he said, my father knows. And he will appoint me to do so. Verse 37. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, where they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until... That word until is used twice here. Until the day that Noah entered into the ark. Verse 39. And he knew not, and, and, sorry, and knew not, they knew not, until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Look in verse 44. Therefore, be ye also ready, for in such an hour as ye think not, the Son of Man cometh. How many of you got up this morning and said, perhaps today, perhaps today. Folks, we need to say that more and more and more because you know what? Just as it was in the days of Noah, and those raindrops began to fall. And they had never heard the word flood before. I was listening to Adrian Rogers. I try to listen to Adrian Rogers a couple of times every week. And I wanted to hear him preach on Noah. He's got about 15 messages that you can pull up and I know you do that a lot, and I, I love reading after the man. I, I wish I had an orator's voice like he's got. And, uh, but what a great preacher, and what a great fundamental Bible-believing, Bible-preaching preacher he was. And he, he gave a little illustration. He said, can you imagine... A little boy went over there and made his way kind of close to the finishing touches of that ark. It had some semblance of what it was going to look like when those floods and those rains finally came. And that little boy listened to Noah talk and sing and how happy they were in the Lord doing God's will and building that ark. And he overheard Noah say, He's coming. He's coming again, and he's going to bring those floods. He's going to bring that rain. And so the little boy listened to all that, and he went home and said, Daddy, can I ask you something? Sure, buddy. What is a flood? What's a flood? He said, well, son, I, I, I don't really know. I'm not really even acquainted with that word. I've certainly never, I, I, I don't know. He said, well, Daddy, what is rain? What is rain? Well, you got me there too, buddy. Because, you know, at that time, we do believe, and Christian scientists, and I'm not really interested in what the other kind of scientists think, because they've got it wrong in so many other areas. But Christian scientists believe that the world had a canopy around about it and that there was this dew, a heavy dew, that came upon the earth every single day. There was no need for rains and showers that this moisture was there. And the world was not necessarily like the Garden of Eden. The Garden of Eden was so special. It was absolutely magnificent. It was a perfect place. And um, our dear forefathers got booted out of that, and we missed out. But, uh, and of course, if Peggy and Walter had been there, probably, possibly the same thing. She loves apples. 
we don't know it was an apple. She loves oranges. And, uh, but anyway, uh, just kidding. It'd been me to eat the fruit first. I know that's what she's thinking and uh, might be. I eat a, try to eat a piece of fruit every day. But they, uh, he, he didn't know what rain was and told the little boy, he said, look, son, when I was a boy, Noah was working on that ark. And I went home and asked my daddy some of the same kind of questions and said, you just need to forget about old crazy Noah. He's a nut. He's building this humongous structure and he is miles and miles and miles away from water. Anybody and everybody knows you're going to build a boat, build a ship, and no doubt many people had built vessels to float in the water all over the place and you do it near the water so you can launch it out into the deep. But he's up there at his house and he is miles from even a lake. And that's the way the days of Noah was. Then let's look in the book of Genesis. Let's go to chapter 6. Chapter 6, And it came to pass, when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh, yet his days shall be a hundred and twenty years. That's another whole story we don't have time for today, but I wish we did. And there were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men, which were of old and were renowned. That renown could also mean that they were very and highly intelligent. You know, I, I heard Rogers, Adrian Rogers say, that people of renown could have been people who had learned new techniques in science and technology even in Noah's day and made all types of conveniences, all types of inventions, very much like we're always trying to do right now in this day and age. But he goes on to say, in verse 5, And God saw the wickedness of man and was great in the earth, that it was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. That sounds like the world today. It, and if it can be imagined, it can be accomplished in this world and age today. Sin has always been rampant, but it's certainly loose here on planet Earth today. And it is, this is a vile, sin, sick, wretched, wicked world we live in. And it's unbelievable. I, you know what? I'm compelled. I read Fox News almost every morning. Sometimes, I'll read it in the afternoon. I can't sit and watch it anymore. I've quit. I quit a few years ago. Miss Cordell said to me a, a few years ago, she said, I'm just about ready to quit watching Fox News. It makes me so sad. And I said, I quit a long time ago. I don't need a steady diet of that. I know how sin, sick, and sad the world is. How mean and cruel people can be and it ain't just men it's women and it ain't just men and women it's children it's teenagers it's elementary kids it's just unbelievable what falls upon our ears certainly certainly these are last days I read an article day before yesterday about two women that live in Kansas and they went to Oklahoma 
one of them to pick up their child. Must have been at camp or something. And uh, they, uh, they found their vehicle abandoned on the side of the road and they've been missing since March 30th. Today is the what? 14th. So for two weeks plus, these two women have been missing. No sign, no evidence, haven't found them yet. One lady was 27, the other one's in her late uh, 30s. And, and, and how tragic, two mothers, two ladies, gone. Where are they? The meanness of somebody has taken those dear ladies. And, you know, you just think the fate cannot be good. The Bible says at this point, God said this, and it's an amazing statement. Verse 6, And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. Have you ever had a regret? Sure you have. Hey, have you ever had buyer's remorse? You got home with something <laughs> and you said, I'm a, I, I, I was just compulsive and I just felt like we had to have it. And I bought it. Honey, did you save the receipt? <laughs> I want to take it back. I've done that a few times. God was not having buyer's remorse God was sickened at his heart that he'd even made us. We were so vile, we were so wicked, it was, it was tragic. He goes on to say, and the Lord said, I will destroy man. I, he gloried in his creation. I've been to six or seven of the performances that they have at Sight and Sound Theater. I've watched one or two on TV. I wish I could have attended Esther, and I didn't get to do that. I hope one of these days I'll be able to watch the video of it. But the first one Peggy and I saw, the very first one, was in the beginning. All about creation. It is still, to this day, my favorite. And watching Jesus walk through the garden and fellowship with Adam. And what a joyful, precious, wonderful fellowship and relationship that it was. And they enjoyed each other so very much. There was laughter. There was humor. There was sweetness there. Fellowship is great. Fellowship is good. And when you can fellowship with God, we've talked about Enoch, and Enoch walked with God, and Enoch was not. God took him home. He said, come on and have breakfast with me in a glorious place that I've created for you and others. And so it, uh, it, 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 it's, it's, just, it's just absolutely phenomenal the relationship that was had and how sad that sin destroyed it all. And God had that. And now it's evolved into the most despicable situation. Go, go on a little further. I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and the creeping thing and the fowls of the air, for it repented me that I have made them. I have in parenthesis here in my Bible, in this reference Bible, it says, I am sorry. I am sorry that I ever made them. And it hurt him so bad. And when God says something, he does it. So, Verse 8 says, but Noah, I love that conjunction. I love the fact that he found at least one family 
that had old-fashioned ideas, that had commitment to God, who still had family altar, family devotion. They read whatever, but they worshiped their God in their home. And Noah was the head of that home, and he had three boys, and they were already grown, and they had three wives. Well, they had one wife each, okay? We have learned, fellas, that is all you need. Amen? That's right. Solomon was not quite as smart as we give him credit to be, okay? 300 wives and 700 concubines. Anyway, you're supposed to laugh at that, but that's okay. It was a dumb joke. But Noah, and I love this, found grace. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. And these are the generations of Noah, and it's shared there. Now, let's look at our outline this morning. There are seven marks of faith about Noah that I love and appreciate. And I want you to look with me. First, he found grace in the eyes of the Lord. By the way, he found it, he didn't earn it. He didn't earn it. There is absolutely zero that you can earn when it comes to this grace and mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is a gift. Salvation is a gift of God. And he found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Number two, he was a just and a perfect man. Um, it is, it is interesting to note here that he was a just man. And what does the Bible tell us four times? It's listed four times. Once in the New Old Testament and three times in the New. But it says that the just shall what? They shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith. Jot this down real quick. I don't think it's in your notes. Jot these verses down real quick on this note, uh, little sheet that you've got. Put down Hebrews chapter 10, verse 38. And then put down Habakkuk. Habakkuk 2, 3. Habakkuk 2, 3. Romans chapter 1. I can't tell you what verse. But you need to read the whole chapter anyway. It'd be good for you. Galatians chapter 3. I don't have the verse. But in Galatians chapter 3, all those references says, the just shall live by faith. You know what, you know what Noah did? Noah lived by faith. He trusted God. Uh, I think the next point is a, Wonderful point here. I like it. No, the next one is he walked with God. Enoch walked with God. Enoch probably, as we said before, had fellowship with Noah and talked with him some and knew about the experience. The next point is he listened to the words of God. When God came to Noah, when God came to Noah, he listened intently to what God was asking him to do. He said, Noah, I want you to build an ark. And he may have done just what I did and said, say what? Build an ark. Uh, God, could you explain to me what that entails, what that means? And yeah, in fact, I'm going to give you some dimensions, son, so you're going to need a lot of lumber. And I want you to build it out of what? What kind of wood? Gopher wood. You go for it. Gopher. Go, go for the wood. I, you know, whatever. And in between the cracks there, I want you to put what on it? Pitch. That's right. Did he say inside or outside? He said both. I want you to make this thing leak proof. You're going to appreciate that when those waves start splashing up against the side of that boat. And so he listened to the words of God. Here's my question to you this morning. Do you listen to the word 
of God. When you read it, we should heed it. That's what he tells us to do. Then he, I love this one. He obeyed the commandments of God. I want you to build it. Here's the dimensions. Get started now. And that's exactly what he did. There wasn't a debate. They didn't sit down at a conference table and have a discussion about this. God said it. Noah believed it. And Noah did it. I love it. That's what God loves. Submission, obedience, then notice this, he preached to the lost to repent and to believe. Noah was an evangelist. I, I don't know what kind of preacher he was. I have a feeling he was humble. He tried to be compelling. I don't think he was hellfire and brimstone. That comes later. That's the second destruction but he preached. And then lastly, Noah's faith is seen in his trusting God, believing in his word, and in an action of obedience. No wonder he found grace. And God called this just and perfect man to do an amazing work. We'll look at the rest of this and we'll fill in the blanks next week. Thank you for coming today. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, oh, how we love you and we praise you and uplift your name again this morning. My, how we love your word. Your words are precious unto us. And I pray that you would help us to be faithful believers. Thank you for your great mercy and grace that you've sent our way. Help us to be faithful. Help us to be humble. Help us to be obedient. I ask you, Father, did you meet with us in a special way? Take and anoint and use our pastor. And Lord, anoint us as listeners. Do pray for those today. Perhaps someone will be here that's never come to know you as their own personal Savior. And we pray that today will be their day of salvation. And so we ask these things in the precious name of our Lord and Savior. Jesus Christ.